when Jesus says thanks. When Jesus says thanks. Let us pray. God, not my will, but your will be done. Not my sermon preached, but your sermon preach in and through me. Make me nothing that you can become everything. Holy Spirit, have your way. God, let your word go forth and not return unto the void. Now may the words of my mouth, but the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. God, you are a strength and our holy redeemer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. When Jesus says thanks. I shared in, in a moment of reflection at 8 o'clock, but is your sermon introduction. On Thursday past, uh, I went to a conference in New Jersey. It's a conference that I attend every year for my own spiritual development. And I left on a Thursday, and when I left uh, the house at about uh, a few minutes to 11 a.m., it was raining and it was mixed with ice. But it wasn't scary enough, so I kept on pressing. Did real well, got up by Delaware and got, uh, on, got on the Jersey Turnpike. When I got on the Turnpike, what became, what was ice soon turned to rain, and somewhere between exit five and eight, it stopped. I said I was praising God until I got to exit nine. When I got to exit nine, what was stopped had now become snow, and I drove in snow for a nine hour, it took me eight hours for a four hour drive. And when I finally arrived on this uh, conference night, which begins on Thursday, the opening service is a revival that starts at 7 p.m. I arrived closer to eight. And when I get there, I ask the uh, receptionist, do you know if the revival is still in play? And they said, no, the revival was canceled because of the snow. And I thought to myself, the facilitator and the uh, one who was giving this said to God, this is an inopportune time for you to have snow because it disrupted plans. While I was standing there with the receptionist after an eight hour drive, I said, uh, gave my name and she said something to me that threw me off guard. She said, let me see if I can find you a room. I said, said what? I said, ma'am, you didn't say, could you find me a room? This room was booked months ago. And so she says to me, well, Mr. West, we kind of overbooked because of the snow. I said, I don't mean to be lacking compassion, but don't inconvenient, inconvenient my reservation then you should have kept my room and gave them another room. The lady says with fright in her face, let me go get the manager. She goes and get the manager. The manager comes and she tries to explain. I said, ma'am, I don't care what you say. This is, un this is un business unprofessional. And you should have cared for me. She said, but I'm going to give you an upgrade. I said, well, why don't you say that? <laughs> So I looked at the young lady who had the fright in her face, and I said, um, ma'am, are you okay? And she said, yeah. I said, well, let me, let me give you, I said, I apologize, but you have to understand, after I've driven eight hours, it's an inopportune time for you to tell me I ain't got a bed. And some might find that thank you is not always appropriate that there are inopportune moments in your life where your, your God requires us to say thanks. And we might want to look back at God and say, this may not be a good time to thank you. It, it, it may be a struggle when you look at October and people in worship are overtaken by a gunman trying to worship God and yet they die. It's not appropriate to say thank you. When you think about November and young kids are having young kid fun, a bar and grill and somewhere in California, and then what was not a drummer but gunfire. And people who were out to have fun, some 11 of them I think don't make it home. 
might seem like an inopportune time to say thank you. When you look at the families in California who are wondering if their house is going to make it through the flames and those who have died and those who uh, are looking at fire and those who see the rubble of their own living might say it's too, too imp it's, not, it's not a good time for Reverend to be talking about saying thank you. Maybe as African Americans and minorities in this nation, when, when the one thing that number 45 has done has shown us that racism may have been in remission. But make America great was exactly what, again, he, he, it seems to be what he meant. The nation going, seemed to be going backwards and not moving forward. May say, we may say, say to God and to the pastors, it's not a good Sunday to talk about saying thanks. Yet, we could say the same thing that was kind of strange about Jesus. For those of you who don't understand the story, don't know where it came from. Jesus had compassion for 5,000 plus people. He said and he preached to them in the heat of the desert. The sun had gone down and it became dark. And Jesus realized that the folk were hungry. That the people needed something to eat. The Bible says that Jesus asked his disciples, said, said uh, uh, do, uh, can we get them any food? And the, and the short of it is this, man, we don't have enough money. We don't have enough food. We don't seem to have enough to, uh, to, to deal with so many people. And though it was true, the Bible says that Jesus didn't say he knew what his father would do. He said he knew what he was going to do. And instead of the Lord holding the disciples and he tested the disciples, he wasn't testing the disciples, I don't believe, to find out if we were going to find food. He was testing the disciples to say, even though the situation seemed blink, blind, and even though it doesn't seem like you have a way out, even though it seems like life is hard and you're facing the struggle, I need to know in the midst of all of this, can you still look to God and say, thank you? Kind of hard to say thanks in a dark place, yet Jesus does it. When Jesus said thanks, this is what he was thanking God for. They said, we got five loaves and two fish, and the Lord said, thank you. Knowing legitimately and, and honestly that five loaves and two fish doesn't seem adequate for so many people, yet he said thank you. Most of us would have said to God, thanks for nothing. But Jesus said thank you because this is what five loaves and two, two, two fish said to him. He said, I thank you God because the five loaves and two fish says you didn't forget me. Y'all say with me now. It may not seem like much, but God gave me something. And I'm thanking him not for the bread. I'm thanking him for remembering I needed him. Come on in here. Let me make it real for you. I have, I have, a, I have a real good friend that I asked to help me do some work. And we set a date. And this real good friend says, I'll meet you there. I said, okay, time came, no friend. He, 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 he left me before, but I said, okay, we're back at this again. So what I did was I gave him a 24-hour break and I texted him, just a friendly reminder. And usually my friend would at least answer me back. He'd no answer. Dead. I said, uh-oh. So I text again, something to the effect of you, everything okay? No answer. So finally, I know I have the ability to say something I ain't got no business. So I thought, well, maybe I said something in passing, then now my friend is mad at me. So my last text says, did you send me out the pastor? Question mark. He calls me, and when he calls me, before he could get past hello, I asked, you still my friend? 
He said, yeah. I said, I ain't do nothing to hurt you. He said, no, you have to go through, you have to do a whole lot to make me not be your friend. I said, well, let me tell you this before you open your mouth again. Even if you tell me you're not going to help me, I'm going to be all right with that. I'm just grateful to know that you still remembered me and you're still my friend. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, even if it's not enough, God, I'm just so grateful that you didn't forget me, that you thought enough about me, that it may not be much, but at least I know that you're still in the blessing business. Y'all ain't got it yet, do you? That means you may not get a steak, but thank him for bologna and cheese. You may not get a big house, but thank him for the little shack you're living in. You may not get a Lexus, but if you got something that goes puck, 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 and burns, thank him. In other words, he says, I'm a thank you because God you didn't forget me and I'm not going to complain about what I don't have. I'm a first thank you for everything I do have. It may not be much but it is evident God that you're still my friend and still in love with me. He said God I thank you for not forgetting me. Some of y'all got to remember that while you're complaining. If you're sitting here and you're breathing he didn't forget you. Come on preacher. I know it's hard. He says, he says, I'm going to thank you because you remembered me. He said, but I'm also going to thank you for this opportunity. Watch what he does. He says, I'm going to thank you because this moment with these five loaves and two fish has given me now the opportunity to show that I can trust you. <laughs> trust. Is not talking about, I trust you when you ain't got no choice. That means you ain't got no choice. Y'all come on in here. People talking about, I'm going to trust him, but you ain't doing nothing. So when you got, when you at a place where you have exhausted all your resources and God is the only resort you have, that ain't trust. That's desperation. Come on, help me, somebody. That a whole lot of people think they're walking around trusting God. But if God is all you got left, you ain't got no choice here. But trust is when you act like you know what he's going to do before he does it. Come on in here. He has five loaves of bread and two fish. And he looks at it. And before he even give a thank you, he shows signs of trusting God. He says, have the men sit down in groups. I got five loaves of bread. I got two fish. It doesn't seem to be enough. But this is my moment to trust God. So even before I go, and go to ask God, I'm going to show you, God, I trust you. So I'm going to prepare for a blessing that you haven't even released yet. I'm preaching better than you're responding. In other words, he says, it's an opportunity that I can show you even before you answer me yay or nay. I'm going to do an action that says I trust you to provide for me. Y'all still ain't got it yet. When Job was sick, and the people were accusing Job. Job took a thing of trust. And he said to God, though you slay me, yet am I going to trust you. And I'm going to stand here and wait for you. You ain't got it yet. That when you say, I'm going to trust God, don't sit there and do nothing. But bring something to the table and show God you trust him. So my children will sit in the car and they start talking about uh, this is the song uh, I'm going to have sung uh, at my wedding. But they don't have no engagement ring. Uh, they ain't got no invitation. But they said, I ain't going to wait. Uh, I'm going to trust uh, that God going to send me a man. Y'all ain't got it yet. Uh, I may be hungry. Ain't got no food. Uh, get yourself a plate, uh, a fork, and a knife. Sit down at the table and say, God, I believe you're going to provide just what I need. This is an opportunity to thank God, to trust. Hey. 
I'm almost done. Woo. He says, I'm going to thank him. He says, I'm going to thank you because you gave me an opportunity to trust. He said, but I'm going to thank you because you've also given me a time to be used for your glory. Jesus, after he sat down, set him down, he does something. In his thank you. He's the leader. And leaders have to show people how to move in faith. So he takes the little bit he has. And he presents it to God in prayer. And he says thank you. Now watch this. He does not direct the Lord's hand. He just takes it. The little bit. And he says, thank you. I got to thinking, why, why didn't he direct his hand? Because he was trying to teach people how to pray. He said, if you're going to trust God, trust him all the way. See, because if I was praying, I would have said something like this. Now, Lord, ain't much, but do me a favor. <laughs> Just stretch it far enough. Now watch this. Don't feed everyone. Just feed the angry ones so I can get up out of here. I said, now Lord, I don't need no bread. They can have my peace. I know it ain't much, but I'm going to thank you for it, but I need you to, to do something with it. Just, just, just feed a few of them and so we, me and my boys can get out of here. Now, that's been my prayer. But, but Jesus said, I'm not going to tell him what to do. But I am going to let him use me so other people can see what God can do. And so he just lifts it up. And he says, thank you. Without direction. Just starts distributing it. Now, notice what happens. He don't touch the bread no more. He makes the disciples touch it. They probably started out thinking, this ain't going to make it. And as they begin to work through the groups, somehow the bread started growing. The fish got bigger. They said, I don't believe it. Well, Y'all wait now. It's 5,000 plus. Five loaves of bread, two fish, one boy's lunch. God ain't touching. Jesus won't touch it. He thanked them. And he walked, they walking around thinking he lost his mind. Y'all watch it now. But let me tell you something I learned. The reason why Jesus, I learned this this weekend. The reason why Jesus had them pass it out because in order for a miracle to take place you have to come to the table and participate so he says I'm not going to do the work and give you the miracle but you're going to have to do something if you're going to want God to move so stop sitting around talking about I'm waiting on the Lord this is real when I'm saying the Lord waiting on you. He ain't going to be your, your butler. He's your God. And you got to learn how to start acting out on your own. But if you thought that was something, as they're passing out the bread, here's the miracle. I thought the miracle was that they fed 
5,000 plus. But when the Lord said, get the rest of it, y'all ain't hear me now. When the Lord said, you got leftovers, when the Lord said what you thought wasn't going to be enough, uh, can be. Can I go back to the back of the end of the day? When you place it in the master's hand, uh, little can become much. Uh, and when they finished collecting it, Jesus was pointing at and they said, truly this is the man of God because God used them for his glory. And I want you to say, thank you God for using me for your glory. Y'all still ain't got it yet. That when I, when Jesus said thank you, he said I'm a thank you because you didn't leave me. I'm a thank you because I saw this was a moment to trust you. And I'm a thank you because you decided to use me for your glory. Even though it didn't look like much. But God, if you're going to use me, then that's enough to say thank you. So just in case y'all missed it. Now, now I, y'all got to get, before y'all, before y'all, before y'all, before y'all get to this end, let me explain it. <laughs> Any of you here that think you don't have a thank you to give, let me help you. <laughs> I don't care what misery you in, what worries you have. If you, you, if you got a worry, a, a, a sickness, a hurt, a pain, don't give you no excuse to not say thank you. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me see. I got myself in it now. Because I can say to you, whatever it is that you're going through that's, that's clogging your praise. If you got here and you got a moment now, you got to trust him and he can use you, then you, you, you got something, but that ain't good enough. Let me, let, me, let me help you. Everybody here got a reason to say thank you. Y'all got to let me finish because I got to explain what I'm going to say so y'all can get it. Y'all going to say, oh, I knew that answer. No, you knew the answer, but you didn't understand the answer. That's what I want you to be. Even if you understand it, pretend you don't. Now, I've heard it in the hoopla of the preacher. One preacher came to uh, West Fair and said, I got 10 good reasons why you should praise him. Well, I got 10 good reasons why you should say thank you. But that was too much hoopla. Then they had to go into, you know, performance. I ain't got time for that. But my, but my other friend heard him say the same thing. He says, now, you got a reason to say thank you. Don't y'all move. Stay right there. Why? What is my reason to say thanks? He woke you up. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, don't, don't, don't y'all move yet. He, he woke you up this morning. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't y'all do Oh, Rep, I know that. Nope, you don't know that. See, this morning, while you were sleeping, the Lord came past your bedside. And when he tapped you, he was reminding us, I didn't forget you. <laughs> you, you got a reason to be thankful because he could have made your bed your cooling board, but instead, instead of walking past you like he didn't see you, he stopped by and he remembered you. Y'all ain't got it. Wait a minute. But I woke up and I got all these problems. He said, that's all right. When I woke you, I let you have your problems because I'm giving you another time and opportunity where you can walk in a day and trust me. Y'all ain't got it yet. He, wait a minute. He says, he says, wait a minute. When I woke you and gave you another day, 
that was another opportunity for you to show you can trust me. They ain't good enough. Well, when I woke you, gave you another opportunity to trust me, now I've given you a privilege to let me use you for your glory. So now when I get up in the morning, I got something to be thankful for because when the Lord woke us up this morning, he was reminding us that we got something to be grateful for because he didn't forget me, he still trusts me and he's going to use me for his glory. Some I just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for a day I've never seen. Thank you for waking me up. Thank you for starting me on my way. Thank you for clothing me in my right mind. Thank. Okay, okay, I'm done. I'm finished with y'all. Y'all doing all right? But just in case, if you can't thank him for that, this ain't the first time Jesus said thanks. Hey. So, so let me give you something else, just in case you know. His friend Lazarus was in the grave, dead and stinky. Jesus comes to the edge of the grave. And as he gets there, before he calls him, he says, thank you for this moment of a funeral and a resuscitation seem inopportune time for the Lord to be thanking God when his best friend and two sisters are weeping in a crowd because somebody did. Imagine that. They come to your funeral of your loved one and he walks in and he says, thank you for this dead body. Hey, but they ain't the only time the Lord said thank you. On the night before he was portrayed, he laid out some bread and some wine. He knew that Friday was coming in the morning. But before Friday came, late Thursday night, he took some bread. He broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, this is my body which is given for you. I'm doing it the best I can right now. At the same night, he took the cup, he lifted it up, gave each one a sip. He said, this is my blood that will be poured out for you. But before he lifted the bread to tell them I'm going to die, before he lifted the cup to let them know I'm going to suffer, he lifted them both up and he said, thank you God. When was the last time you could find thank you at the threshold of death? But Jesus said, thank you the night before he died because he knew that Sunday morning he would get up with all power. I'm trying to help somebody. No matter what you're going through, you can thank him right now because your early Sunday morning will. When Jesus said thank you, he knew why he was in it. That the Lord was going to bring him out. So go on and thank him in advance. Y'all see? Let me, when Jesus said thanks. Let me say it again. He knew that God was going to deliver him. Hey! When y'all y'all say God, let me speed up. When Jesus said thanks, he knew that God was able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than what he could ask, and more with what than what he sees. Y'all still ain't got this here. When Jesus said thanks, he said, I know my father is able to turn this few lunch, this little lunch into a meal for five. Y'all still ain't got this yet. When Jesus said thanks, he knew that the Lord was going to make everything all right. All right. So 
this is a <laughs> I said this morning. And when you give God thanks, this ain't no auction. You know, auctions here, wave a finger. Open your mouth. Throw back your hands. Look up to heaven and tell them that. So much to be grateful for. I'm not going to get into my own testimony. But I do know this. The Lord is good. And if it had not been for him. So much so that I need him every day in my life. When I open my eyes. Before I even say good morning to my wife, I say, thank you, God. And I thank him because if he had taken me the night before, I wouldn't, know, I wouldn't have known if I was ready for the call, even though I've tried my best. I still need grace and mercy. So I don't take life lightly. It is a gift. And I realize the only thing my heart is hooked to is the power of God that makes it pop. And every morning I wake up, it's a day of thanksgiving. That's what Jesus was saying. When Jesus said thanks, he was telling us it's always a day of thanksgiving. And one of the greatest things that we can give him as a thank you is our, is our lives. The doors of the church are open. 